Okay, I've prepared another example uh, for you to look at in terms of something similar to the orthographic projections when you have two apparent dips and you're looking for the strike and true dip. So let's take a look at this. Uh, the question I've created is two roads cut through the same basalt dike. One road has a bearing of north 20 west and the dike has a measured apparent dip of 34 degrees. The other has a bearing of north 55 east and the apparent dip is measured at 39 degrees. Using orthographic projection determine the strike and dip of this dike. We're going to start by putting down all that we know at the start of this problem. And uh, first thing I always put on is the cardinal axis north south east west and then we have these two apparent dip bearings one at north 20 west drawn in here one at north 55 east should stress that partial credit is awarded on quizzes and homework uh, and starting with this will get you some credit so don't leave that page blank an orthographic projection of course is taking this information that is in the earth and folding it up onto the paper plane the map plane if you will and just using the triangles that result to say something about the true dip. I'm going to start with the first apparent dip. It's 34 degrees north 20 west. So I need a 34 degree angle. I'm going to use my protractor to measure that out, draw in a line at that appropriate angle, and then take a perpendicular from the original bearing, that first line you drew, and draw it out until it connects with the other line. The measurement for this particular line is 2.3 inches. It will vary for you depending on where you draw your perpendicular. Next thing we want to do is put in a line for the apparent dip that the 39 degrees from north 55 east. So our north 55 degrees to east line is this. We get out a protractor, measure out 39 degrees, and we place a line in at that angle. After that, we're going to want to find the right D that connects those two lines at a perpendicular from our apparent dip line. Remember, we want the per perpendicular because this is just a fold into the earth. So we slide our ruler out, or in, depending on where we started, and we find the exact length we want and draw a line there. The next step is to connect the two points where the perpendiculars intersect the apparent dip bearings. So a straight line drawn with a ruler connecting those two points will provide us with the strike line. The strike line, we can measure its attitude by going to our north axis and measuring the angle at which it lies with respect to the north axis. We can use any orientation system we want, azimuth or quadrant. Uh, to be consistent here, I chose quadrant, and the measurement I got was north 66 west. And that is our strike measurement. This is our first part of the answer. We've got strike. Next up is the dip direction. Well, that's easy because the dip direction is always 90 degrees from your strike line. So we're going to draw a dip direction that goes into the origin. So we're just completing our triangular series here by putting a perpendicular and putting the dip direction in. Okay, now we're going to use our D measurement again. And we're going to go away from this perpendicular 2.3 inches, which is my D. Yours will vary. D equals 2.3 inches gives us this black line right here. And the next step is to simply complete the triangle back to the origin. That's a measurable angle, of course. So taking your protractor, you can get 43 degrees in that angle on that triangle. And that gives us our final answer. We have a strike of north 66 west a dip of 43 degrees, and the dip direction is pointing north. So north 66 west, comma 43 degrees, N will satisfy our answer.